Thank you, Ms. Patton. Uh, th thank, thank you, Acting President, and um, thank you to all the previous speakers who have spoken on this piece of legislation, and, and in particular, Mr. Jepp. Um, I think Mr. Jepp has just so beautifully and eloquently illustrated why we are doing this and why we must do this and why this bill won't won't, won't solve what has happened in the past, maybe notes won't solve what happens in the future, but it is acknowledging the pain, it is acknowledging the heinous crimes that have been committed, it is acknowledging those brave people who came forward and spoke to, to those crimes, and it acknowledges the people that never made it to speak out, and it acknowledges the people that still live with that knowledge, but without the words or the ability to tell their stories. Um, it is for all of them. And this bill effectively will ensure that religious and spiritual leaders will be forced to report child abuse to authorities, as it should be. They can no longer rely on the religious confession privilege to protect pedophiles, as it should be. It will see those in religious ministries added to the list of mandated reporters to child protection and the confessional seal lifted for suspected child sexual abuse, as it should always have been. The bill will also create reforms to allow survivors of institutional abuse to apply to the courts to overturn historical compensation payments. And just at that point, I would like to, to, um, to echo some of the comments that, that Mr. Mr. O'Donoghue mentioned about what appears to be um, a, an unintended consequence of this legislation that may actually carve out a certain number of, um, of victims who had sought compensation in a certain period that was effectively sort of um, after the statute of limitations had been removed but before the Ellis defence um, legislation had been passed. And there's a, there's a number of victims that, you know, took what they could from the church and received very paltry sums um, in recognition, well, not recognition, um, to, to sort of toss them away, as it were, and those people, it appears that this legislation may, un may, um, may sadly not, not capture in, in allowing them to, um, to, to really seek the compensation that they so deservedly, they so, they, they so deserve. Um, I, I think Mr O'Donoghue will ask questions in committee and I'll be, I'll be listening very closely to that. I have a confession to make. I've never been to confession. Um, but if I had, and if I'd confessed to child abuse, I would have thought that I would not have been able to finish 20 Hail Marys and light a candle before the police arrived, cuffed me, and carted me away. And I would think that most Victorians would be of the same mind. Surely, surely, you can't confess to horrific child abuse and the clergy protects you? Seriously? And yes, that has been the case. And that is what many of um, the members of the Catholic Church are still defending, which beggars, beggars belief. Now, they've been doing it for hundreds of years. But from today, because of this legislation, that changes in the state of Victoria, as, as it should be. Um, it will come as no surprise to many of you in the chamber that this has been an issue that I have been very um, passionate about and, and the Reason Party has been pursuing it. And I personally have been pursuing this issue for, for nearly two decades. Uh, we published a book called Hypocrites in 2001 where we revealed hundreds of child sexual abusers in the Catholic Church. Um, throughout that book, um, we recognised that the ones that were in the courts were just the tip of the iceberg. And 
um, and we called, we called for a royal commission into child sexual abuse uh, in the church. And, and I was very pleased that the federal government uh, undertook that work. And I have the, the, the pile of reports from that in my office and um, it reaches to my thigh. The work that they did was extraordinary. The numbers that Mr Jett mentioned in his previous, in his contribution, that in the thousands, and we know that that was just an example of the suffering and the crimes that had been committed. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Ms Crozier and the work that she did uh, in, in her, in, in her uh, really landmark report. And they, they looked at these issues. I think it was a very brave report. Uh, and I, you know, I, it was something that the community had been longing for and literally people had been dying for, for, for many years and for decades. So under our current law, Victorian teachers, police, medical practitioners, nurses, school counsellors, early childhood workers, youth justice workers, must tell authorities if they develop a reasonable belief in the course of their pre professional work that a child has been abused. But until now, priests and religious leaders have been exempt from mandatory reporting. Mandatory reporting is exactly that, it is mandatory. Everyone is required to report, no matter what. Priests don't get a freak pass because they sit in a sacred box. Uh, you don't hear Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists asking to be exempt from, re from reporting horrible crimes. So why does the Catholic Church somehow think that their canon law trumps the law of the land? trumps the law that we all undertake to uphold. Recently, when Catholic Archbishop of Melbourne, Peter Comensoli, said that he would rather go to jail than report admissions of child sexual abuse made in his confessional, he said he would not break the Catholic tradition, he would break the law. Personally, I'll keep the seal. Uh, but I just don't get it. I don't understand how someone with Christian and compassionate principles could think that their canon law, that their belief in their religion trumps the protection and safety of a child. I, in whose world is that the case? You know, it's, it's an utter disgrace. It is an utter disgrace. You know, but I suppose he's admitting it now that he will be protecting pedophiles in their long time tradition. And it was, um, I was actually having a quick look on, on hypocrites that we put in, as I said, in 2001. And, and at the beginning, beginning of it, I just make a note um, about some of the material that we had used in it. But I just would like to, to quote, in 1993, brother Barry Coldry wrote a secret report for the congregation executives of the Christian Brothers. The report was known as Reaping the Whirlwind, Sexual Abuse from 1930 to 1940, 1994. This was a secret report. Um, the report detailed abuses in WA orphanages, which took the form of sex rings and a sex underworld in which the Christian Brothers collaborated with one another and possibly shared the boys. Um, this report was then tabled in the New South Wales Supreme Court and was quoted widely. But this sense of covering up and hiding and protecting can no longer go on. And the fact that we have an archbishop, a senior leader of a religious organisation saying that he will break the law and he will continue to protect pedophiles, I am outraged by this. The community is outraged by this. Um, you know, perhaps the clergy should, perhaps he should ask, what would Jesus do? I reckon Jesus would mandatory report. And the Reason Party supports the bill and commends it to the House.